Sloan makes you an offer and you walk out of the restaurant. Murray, Arnie, you have I got, got to get pick. over this office. The twenty-second floor. Oh, oh, you can see everything. Oh, for God's sake, I don't believe it. What? It's King Kong. He's sitting on top of the Time Life building. Seems to be crying. <laughs> Ooh. Poor gorilla bastard. Somebody should have told him they don't uh, make these buildings the way they used to. Murray, Sloan didn't make you such a bad offer. No, offense. Sloan is an idiot. I've got news for you, Cookie. With your situation this week, you're going to need idiots. Now, you do now, not Arnie, you have shouldn't to holler at to... me. I brought you a present. Murray... And that other uh, fella you sent me to with the TV series, a killer, Arnie, I saw notches on his attaché case. Murray, you've got a rotten reputation. Even these guys weren't easy to grab. Why do you have to build your own personal blacklist? Why can't you just get blacklisted as a communist like everybody else? <laughs> what did you do to him? Oh, well, you just left him standing there. You just left him standing there. <laughs> Arnie, Arnie, it was beautiful. <laughs> oh, I would have loved to have seen that. It must have been great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wish to God I didn't enjoy you so much. I don't do you any damn good at all, do I? Uh, all right, come on, Murray. No more fun and games with Leo. Do you understand? He's absolutely all we have left before the hearing Thursday. <laughs> Don't worry, Aaron. I figured I could always go back with Chuckles the Chipmunk. All right, Murray. Okay. Takes me an hour to get insulted. Now I'm insulted. You walked out of my office. That wasn't a nice thing to do to me, Murray. I mean, you come to my office today like George God. Everybody's supposed to come up and audition for a human being in front of you. I called Leo back. I apologized. I told him the phone broke down. I... Everything is going to be fine. Arnie, you said I insulted you. Well, damn it, get angry. Come on, raise your voice, at least your eyebrows. Please, please have an argument with me. Oh, you're just, you're just getting excited, that's all. Now, look, I've got Leo to come over. He's going to see it tonight. Everything is going to turn out fine. You'll see, now, honey, will just you forget fine. That? Will you forget now, it? Look, if, if you love Nick or whoever it is he's calling himself this week, you have got to take any kind of a stupid job to keep him... Now, I even thought maybe Shirley and me would take him, but, you know, our three kids should go crazy. Oh, don't worry, Arn. This uh, welfare crowd, they know what they're doing. They'll put Nick with a good family. Yep. Murray, I finally figured out your problem. There is only one thing that really bothers you. Other people. The enemy. Watch out, Murray. They're everywhere. Go ahead, Arnold. Give me advice. At 30000 a year, you can afford it. Oh, I get it. If I'm so smart, why ain't I poor? Well, you better get a damn good act of your own, buddy, before you start giving mine the raspberry. What's this game you play going to be like in ten years without youth? Murray, I can't watch this. You're going to shape up. Shape up? That's right. Shape up. Arnie, what the hell happened to you? You got soul. I don't know you anymore. Who is it? When you quit Harry the Fur King on 28th Street, remember? That's 20 years ago, Murray. Now, Harry said you weren't behaving maturely enough for a salesman. Your uh, clothes didn't match or something. So the next day, you dressed perfectly. Hamburg, gray suit, cufflinks, carrying a briefcase and a rolled umbrella. And you came into Harry's office on roller skates. 
Where'd they go, Arnie? What happened to your roller skates? Well, I don't do practical jokes anymore, if that's what you mean. Practical? That's right! A way to stay alive. Gee, if most things aren't funny, Arn, then they're only exactly what they are. Then it's just one long dental appointment, interrupted occasionally by something exciting, like waiting or falling asleep. What's the point if I leave things just the way I find them? Then I'm just adding to the noise. I'm just taking up some more room on the subway. Murray, the welfare board has these specifications. All oh, you have to God. do is to make up your Arnie, mind. Arnie, you don't Murray, understand I'm... anymore. You've got that wide stare that people stick in their eyes so nobody will know their head's asleep. You've got to be a moaner, a shuffler. You want me to come sit and eat fruit with you and watch the clock run out. You start to drag and stumble under the rotten weight of all the people who should have been told off. All the things you should have said. All the specifications that aren't yours. You know, the only thing you've got left to reject is your food in a restaurant. If they do it wrong, you can send it back and make a big fuss with a waiter. Five months ago, I was on the subway on my way to work. I was sitting on the express, same as every morning, looking out the window, watching the local stops go by in the dark, with an empty head and my arms folded, not feeling great, not feeling rotten, just not feeling. And for a minute, I, I couldn't remember. I didn't know, unless I really concentrated, whether it was a Tuesday or a Thursday or... For a minute... It could have been any day, Arn. I gotta know what day it is. I gotta know what's the name of the game and what the rules are without anyone else telling me. You gotta own your own days and name them. Each one of them. Every one of them. Or else the years go right by and none of them belong to you. And that ain't just for weekends, kiddo. Well, here it is, the uh, day after Irving R. Feldman's birthday, and I never even congratulated him. Murray! Ooh. <laughs> well, what's so funny? I scared myself. <laughs> Murray, I've long been aware... Hmm. I've long been aware that you don't respect me so much, no? I suppose there are a lot of brothers who don't get along, but in reference to us and considering the factors, it sounds like a contract, doesn't it? Unfortunately for you, Murray, you want to be a hero. If maybe a fella falls into the lake, you can jump in and save him. There's still that kind of stuff. But uh, who gets opportunities like that in uh, midtown Manhattan with all that traffic? I'm willing to deal with the available world. I don't choose to shake it up, but to live with it. There's the people who spill things, and there's the people who get spilled on, and I don't choose to notice the stains. I have a wife, and I have children, and business, like they say, is business. I'm not an exceptional man, so it's possible for me to stay with things the way they are. I'm lucky. I'm gifted. I have a talent for surrender. And I'm at peace, but you, oh, you're cursed. And I like you, Murray. So it makes me sad. You don't have the gift, and I can see the torture of it. All I can do is worry for you, but I will not worry for myself. You can't convince me that I'm one of the bad guys. I get up, I go, I lie a little, I peddle a little, I watch the rules. I talk the talk. We fellows have those offices high up there so that we can catch the wind and go with it however it blows. But, and I'm not going to apologize for it, I take pride. I am the best possible Arnold Burns.
Give my regards to Irving R. Feldman, will you? Hey, Arnold. Murray, please allow me once to leave a room before you do. <laughs>